Hello everyone, this is Oshini from Chinta.com. In this video, we will talk about geometry and how to think about it. So if you are just starting out with geometry for mathematical olympiads or ISI CMI entrances, or if you want to do research in geometry, this video is useful for you. I will start with something really simple and then I will show how you can increase your understanding and get into something much more rich, much more complex. So let's start with something super simple. It's called similarity of triangles. Similarity of triangles. And there are two ways people talk about it. One of them is through angles. The other one is through proportionality of sides. So what is the definition one? The definition one is all angles. So if this is ABC and if this is DEF, then the definition is angle A is equals to angle D, angle B is equals to angle E, and angle C is equals to angle F. There is another definition, definition two, which is about proportionality of sides. So it says that corresponding sides, if you take their ratios, AC by DF, BC by EF, they will all be equal. So here is a challenge question. Can you rigorously prove that these two definitions are equivalent? Now you take it a notch higher. You think about it from the perspective of transformation. So what is a transformation? It is basically a map that takes a point to another point on the plane. So suppose we have a point A and we move it by 10 centimeters to the right, then now its position is A prime. This is a geometric transformation. It's an example. So it's a function that takes points on the plane to other points on the plane. It can also move objects. For example, if you have a triangle here, after movement, the triangle comes here. So you are translating the entire triangle. Now a deeper level of understanding this is can you think about similarity of triangles in terms of this transformation. So, let me just copy it here and let me ask this question again. Is there a way to move AVC so that it becomes DEF? That's where transformation geometry comes in and the idea is that you use something called homotheity. Homotheity basically means you are contracting or expanding something. So, let me join DA. Let me join FC. And let me join EB. And suppose all of them meet at a point O. Suppose that happens then you can think of ABC being blown up into DEF. ABC being blown up into DEF. A becomes D, B becomes E, and C becomes F. And all of them are blown up by the same amount, by the same proportion. So, if this is, if OC is 5 centimeters, maybe OF is 2 times 5 centimeters, maybe it is 10 centimeters, this OF. It's a twice increase. Similarly, if OA is maybe 4 centimeters, then OD is also expanded 2 times, so it is 8 centimeters. So the constant that you multiply with you are sending x to some constant times x. That is the transformation. If x has the coordinate 2, 3, 
you are sending it to 2 times 2 comma 3 which is 4 comma 6. That is the transformation. It's sometimes known as homotheity. So this is the second level of understanding. You are thinking about similarity of triangles and then you say, oh, maybe it is a geometric transformation. Here is a challenge question. Are any two triangles which are similar, are they homothetic? So can you find a point O from which you can blow up one of the triangle and make it into the other triangle? If yes, then how can you find that point of homotheity? Okay, so that is the second level of understanding. Now I'll tell you this, when I work with students in Chinta for mathematical olympiads or research or leadership, I tend to think of them as collaborators. I don't think of them as just students. Why not? Because each of these students have the potential to become a research collaborator with me or maybe someday they can also collaborate to build business projects. These are the three levels, Olympiad, research and leadership. Whenever I see a student, that's a human being who is able to think, who is able to create. Why not? That person is a collaborator. So that's how I think about it. And when I discuss geometry, I'm actually thinking, can I level up the person so that he or she is in a certain stage where they can contribute in research. So this first two stages, similarity and transformation, these are preparatory ground for creating a collaborator, a research collaborator, let's say, in the long run. Now it comes to the third stage. If the student is really active, if, the th if he or she is thinking about the problem, then I say, okay, now let's think about this particular transformation, x going to kx. This, my friend, is sometimes known as a projective transformation. A projective transformation. There is a whole part of geometry called projective geometry. And if you try to write down the formula of a projective transformation, it turns out that in one dimension, the formula is ax plus b divided by cx plus d, where ac minus bd is not zero. So what was similarity of triangle and then what became transformation of triangles using homotheity now became a projective map. Here, the formula was x going to k is 1, k is k, kx plus 0 divided by 0x plus 1. This is the formula. So it fits into this ac minus bd not equal to 0 perfectly. There are other projective transformations, for example, x going to x plus a. This is a translation. You are just moving it by A units. There is another one. X going to 1 by X. This is called reciprocation. This is also a projective transformation. In fact, these three are the fundamental projective transformations. Using them, you can create any other projective transformation. So, for example, if I have 2X plus 3 divided by 4x plus 9, first check it is a projective transformation, of course, 2 times 9 minus 3 times 4 is not equal to 0. Can you write this, this function, can you write this as a composition of x going to x plus k1, x going to x plus uh, k1, k2x, some constant times x, and x going to k3 by x. Okay, so only these three transformations together creating this 2x by 3 plus 3 divided by 4x plus 9 by composition of functions. Can you do it? If you can, put it in the comment section. Tell me how we can write 2x plus 3 divided by 4x plus 9 using a composition of these functions. You see, we are already in the research domain. We are already thinking about things which are a little bit more complex. Now we go to the next stage, 
we say, okay, let's think like Klein. Uh, or let's say, uh, let's say Riemann. Let's think like Riemann. Or Klein. And let's think, what are the ob objects of geometry? What are the properties of the plane that are invariant under the projective transformations? What does that mean? It means that whenever you send x to ax plus b divided by cx plus d, what is it that does not change when you make this change? You are moving around x, you are moving around x. What is it that doesn't change when you do this change? This is called the invariant of the transformation. And turns out there is a very interesting invariant called cross ratio. Cross ratio. It is the ratio of ratios. So if you have four points on the plane, on a straight line, let's say A, B, C and D, and the cross ratio is CA by CB divided by DA by DB. This is the cross ratio. So after you apply the transformation, maybe these points, so this point is 0 suppose, maybe this point is 1, this point is 2, this point is 4 and this point is 7. After you apply the transformation, a goes to some point, B goes to some point, C goes to some point and D goes to the other point. Let's say the transformation is this, fx equals to 2x plus 3 divided by 4x plus 9. fx equals to 2x plus 3 divided by 4x plus 9. So the, so f of 1 is 2 times 1 plus 3 divided by 4 plus times 1 plus 9. So this is 5 over 13. Like this, you'll get f of 2, f of 3, f of 4. I mean, sorry, f of 2, f of 4, f of 7, all of them. What you can check that when you get the output points, which is a1, so this is my a1, b1, c1, and d1, when I get these output points, I can play the same game, c1, a1 by c1, b1, and D1, A1 by D1, B1. This will turn out to be equal to the original cross ratio. It's one of the most amazing discoveries of mathematics. Now we are thinking about cross ratio. See, starting from similarity of triangles, I have sort of taken the student and I've come to projective geometry and cross ratio. And now I'm at the very verge of introducing hyperbolic geometry. Because I can now think that instead of doing this on a straight line, what happens if I do it on a complex plane? That is, if I do it f of z equal to a z plus b divided by c z plus d, a c a d minus b c is not equal to zero. I hope I'm writing this correct all the time. Okay, this is wrong actually. This is a d minus b c not equal to zero. Okay. So the question is now this, what type of transformation are these complex projective transformations? And what is invariant, invariant under these transformations? Maps on the complex plane. And suddenly, the entire world of hyperbolic geometry opens up. And now we can start doing research. I have my collaborator who is my student. I can do research. And then I can ask a more important question. Can I improve machine learning algorithms using this hyperbolic geometry? Because maybe they are able to handle a certain kind of data. And can I use that machine learning algorithm into a software that I am working on with a, let's say, a solar data company from Michigan or some other place. And all of a sudden, it becomes a business application. So this entire journey from similarity of triangles to homotheity to projective geometry and uh, cross-ratio and then to 
complex projective geometry in the sense that Mobius transformations, hyperbolic geometry, and then machine learning, all of this together comes into this one beautiful string. And remember that it's about finding a collaborator in a student. It has always been like that at Chinta. So I hope you learned something from this video. If you are learning geometry, if you are thinking about how it goes in the in the forward loop, then this is a kind of a story. I hope you liked it and keep on working really hard. And um, I hope someday we can get to work together. If you are new to this channel, please stay subscribed. At Chinta, we have fantastic videos on mathematics, statistics, computer science, physics, and we have fantastic programs on Olympiads, research and leadership leading up to path to Ivy League universities. So check the link in the description for that. Thank you. Bye. Take care.